football IQ is, is, is very, very good. And uh, that's what allows him to be successful. It doesn't matter what offense you're in, uh, how much you give him. Uh, he's, he's done a really good job of that. Two, three games. What would, what would you say Titus Howard is in his move to left guard? He's improving. Uh, he's getting more comfortable there. The more he's been there, the more comfortable he's gotten, the more comfortable he is in, in, in those guys working together over there, making calls and being on the same page. Uh, I think it's been good for him simply because he's been stable there in one position, and uh, he's getting more and more comfortable with that. And I think you're starting to see him play a little bit more aggressive than uh, what he has in the past simply because he's getting a little more comfortable. What's the biggest, when a, when a player makes the transition that he has, is it more of a challenge in pass protection or as a run blocker? Both, both. Now, offensive linemen, they all love to run block. I mean, they all love coming off the ball. Uh, the big challenge is, in his case, being a tackle and a guard is the pass blocking because of how it is when you're on the edge as opposed to being inside having help. Uh, and I think that's been a plus for him from a pass blocking standpoint is that obviously he's proven in the past that he can – you know, he can play outside also and be a good pass block. But being inside, you know, a lot of things happen. There's games that happen. You've got to work with the center. You've got to work with the tackle. And he's learning all of that right now. And he's, and he's, he's getting more and more comfortable with that. But the transition is probably a little bit tougher pass blocking than it is run blocking. What about Marcus Cannon? How do you feel about Cannon? Two, two games that he played the full array of snaps. Huh? You know, he's, his stamina's gotten much, much better. Uh, he's, been consi- he's been what we thought he would be. Uh, we wasn't sure how much he would be able to, to go and, and be able to do at this point. But uh, he's, I mean, he, he's further along than what we anticipated at this time and a lot earlier than what we anticipated at this time. And uh, he's playing good football for us. Where is Lane Taylor in his availability? Well, Lane is still, uh, still trying to get it all figured out from the standpoint of where he fits and making sure that things are right uh, with him physically. Uh, he is getting there much better physically. Uh, he, he is not uh, unhealthy right now. It's just that, you know, working him back in. But uh, he's still right there in the picture and uh, at some point uh, could be available for us. Do you have an update on any of your injured guys yet? Excuse me? Do you have an update on any of your injured guys yet? In particular, any? Like Justin Reed, he's day-to-day. Uh, our, our kicker will kick today, and we'll, we'll see how he is. Uh, Terrence uh, Mitchell's been a little sick, but uh, he'll, he'll be okay. Uh, I don't know how much he'll do today, but uh, he's had a little f- a little bug, but uh, he'll be available. Uh, but for the most part, all the other guys are are, are fine and ready to go. What about Camus? Excuse me. Uh, he, on a limited basis, you know, uh, in practice today, we're hoping he'll be full go come Sunday. Leadership was the first thing in. And wanting him to understand is that, you know, we're, we're going through a redo and restart here. Uh, you know, you've been with some good franchises and you've been uh, uh, along some places where, you know, things have been established. And, and I felt like that because of the kind of player he's been and the, and the way he's been as a professional, that he would fit perfectly here with what we were trying to get done. And he has been all of that. Uh, not just him being vocal, which he always is, but it's the things he says. And um, uh, his leadership has been valuable, and I'm, I'm happy he's here. And he's been a tremendous help, not only for that room, but for this entire football team. Dave, whenever y'all were using unbalanced lines, bringing an extra lineman in, I mean, it seemed like y'all were trying to get early yards first. I mean, what, what, what kind of were the reasonings for using those in certain situations? Well, we felt like it gave us an advantage uh, running to the strong side, having – that extra guy in there, that offensive lineman, instead of having, uh, uh, you know, regular offensive line in there, a tight end in that group, and it, it just, it, we felt like it gave us an advantage to be able to control the line of scrimmage and get our backs to the line of scrimmage and get positive yards. What's the most important thing that you'll need to see from Davis this week in order for your team to be successful? You know, basically get off to a good fast start. Um, you know, be comfortable in, in what he's doing and and stay the course. When adversity happens, uh, and I feel like he'll do that because he's shown that. But basically, he just needs to just go out and execute the offense and do what he's asked to do and get us in the end zone. And, and, and I, I feel like that, uh, you know, he'll be able to do that because of uh, having a game and a half now under his belt. Uh, you know, we're going to run the offense and let him execute it and see what happens. David, at every level, what makes a good Frazier's defense challenging? 
Well, they can be very multiple, and uh, they they will pressure you. Uh, I know this on third down. I know we expect they're going to play man coverage every third down because that's what he's always done. Uh, they like blitzing five guys. Uh, I know with a rookie quarterback, I know he's not going to sit back and just let four guys, you know, rush the passer. I know he's going to add an extra guy just to see how he can handle it, and and we'll be ready for that. After watching um, some film review of the game against the Panthers, what type of impact did you see in the secondary with not having Justin Reed out there on the field? Well, just his knowledge was one thing. Uh, you know, he's the quarterback back there, and. Uh, uh, Lonnie, first time Lonnie had been back there at, at, at full time at this point uh, in the game. And, you know, uh, having him back, having his leadership, he's another one of those guys, his leadership back there. You know, he's he's going in now, I think his third year starting here. And, uh, you know, having him back uh, will be a, a plus for us in securing our back end on the defensive side. David, it came down to you and Frazier. He'd been a head coach before. When it came down to the end, uh, did you think you were going to get the job? Did you think you had a good chance? And when did you finally know it was you, O'Neill? I, I never at any point during that process until Cal told me I was going to be the head coach that I felt like I was going to be the head coach here. Now, at, no end, at no time during the whole process that I ever feel comfortable. Twice while I was here during the interview, I thought I was going back home. And uh, I was still here. Why uh, was that you thought you were going back yeah. home? Uh, because I was never told anything, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe at one point, Leslie and I were here at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the timetable was, but I think we're here at one time. And, you know, speaking of him, you know, he's actually in this business, one of my closest friends and uh, that I have a utmost respect for, he and his whole family. As a matter of fact, I believe his son played here at Rice at, uh, at one point. So when you were told you got the job, what would you do? Uh, I prayed and said, thank you, Lord. needs to do this week. Last week you talked about how you had some good plays early and you kind of let them off the hook. What needs to, what do you need to see this week? For we got to tackle better. I mean, we got to tackle better and we've got to play coverage much more aggressive than we have done. Uh, this football team is very versatile. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll throw the ball around. They'll put five receivers in the game. They'll put four. Uh, and we just got to be more aggressive than we have been. And basically tackle better. That was the one thing in the, in, the, in this past game is that we, we missed a bunch of tackles and we've got to tackle better and cover more aggressively. When you worked with Josh Allen as a rookie, he was one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. He's, he's one of the, the best now. What what is uh, his kind of growth taught you in terms of just developing quarterbacks in this league? Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say he was one of the worst. I think he was a rookie, you know, yeah, and was learning. Really you know, was a learning and. Uh, you knew at that time uh, when he was 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 growing, and actually, you know, we didn't start him right away. You know, uh, we we started another guy, and uh, he ended up becoming a quarterback. I think real quickly after the first ball game or during the first ball game. But you knew developmentally that he was going to become what he has become right now, just with time. You know, and there was a fundamental things that he needed to correct, and it's obviously he's corrected those right now, and he's playing at a very high level right now. Revan Jordan, you were mentioning a couple weeks ago, his progression. Where Where is he at learning uh, more about this offense where he is right now? He's getting better and better, and he's getting more comfortable. Uh, being on our show team, doing the other team's offense and playing tight end uh, and doing the different things that the different teams that we play with their tight ends do is actually helping him develop into a better player. And uh, he's still learning what we do, uh, but for the most part, his time's coming. And... Uh, you know, we've got, that's a good room there. You know, the three guys that are in front of him, that's a good room. And, and he's developing. Uh, he's learning. He's got good mentors there. And uh, at some point when his time comes, I know he'll be ready. So can, you just, one last thing. can you just talk about how important it is or if it's important to be patient with young quarterbacks as you talk about Josh Allen? Is that some of the things that those of us who aren't working with them don't really understand the development process? Yeah, because the thing you don't want to do when you – you don't want to rush them. You don't want them to make that they feel like they have to make the plays all the time. Because, again, at that, that position, they, they control the ball 99% of the time when you're on offense. It's going to be in their hands. And you want them basically to be just good decision makers and do the right thing with the ball. And sometimes when you've got guys gifted like Josh is, for example, you know, they, they feel like sometimes that they can make every throw – uh, they feel like they can make every play. And basically, as a quarterback position, when you're young like that, all you want them to do is just do the job, do what you're asked to do, 
and not do any more, and that way protect the football. And that's the most important thing with young quarterbacks is protecting the football. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm.